Look at the picture marked number one in your test book. A. The man is pouring something to drink. B. The man is writing something on his laptop. C. The man is taking a nap. D. The man is writing a letter on his note. Number two. Look at the picture marked number two in your test book. A. The horse is running through a forest. B. The man is screaming out loud. C. The horse is jumping over a block. D. The horse is sleeping peacefully. Number three. Look at the picture marked number three in your test book. A. The women have the same bracelets. B. The women are wearing sunglasses. C. The woman on the right has longer hair. D. The women are twin sisters. Number four. Look at the picture marked number four in your test book. A. The woman is making a phone call. B. The man is taking a test. C. They're waiting for a train. D. They have been robbed of money. Number five. Look at the picture marked number five in your test book. A. The traffic lights are all the same size. B. The traffic lights are held by the same cable. C. The arrow means to go back. D. The traffic light in the middle is not working. Number six. Look at the picture marked number six in your test book. A. The watermelons are seedless. B. The watermelon is cut into quarters. C. The watermelon is split in half. D. The other ones are not watermelons. Number seven. Look at the picture marked number seven in your test book. A. The street is filled with a mob. B. It is cloudy and rainy. C. There are only a few cars moving on the road. D. There are only a few cars parked on the road. Number eight. Look at the picture marked number eight in your test book. A. The women are sitting on a curb. B. The car is about to pick them up. C. They're waiting for the truck. D. They're enjoying each other's company. Number nine. Look at the picture marked number nine in your test book. A. The people are crossing the road. B. The trees are over the train. C. The car is being chased by a police car. D. Cars are going both ways on this street. Number ten. Look at the picture marked number ten in your test book. A. The tablecloth is being put on the table by a maid. B. A couple is sitting at the table. C. The table is ready to host people. D. The cups are full of drinks. Eleven. Number eleven. Who is going to write the memo? A. He's arriving later. B. No, on the right side. C. Yoko's doing it now.
Number twelve. When will the document be released? A. She'll borrow one. B. This morning. C. By telephone. Number thirteen. Do you know where the nearest bank is? A. In thirty minutes. B. No, I'm not quite certain. C. Okay, I'll deposit it. Number fourteen. Were you able to get tickets for the performance? A. Yes, I ordered them by letter. B. I'm not a good performer. C. The train is on time. Number fifteen. How long are you going to be away from your office? A. About an hour ago. B. Only for a day or so. C. The bus was behind schedule today. Number sixteen. Did you get my letter, or should I send it again? A. I'll try to visit. B. I spent fifteen minutes. C. I received it last night. Number seventeen. Don't you have a meeting at the security office now? A. Oh, very secure. B. No, it's not until three o'clock. C. Yes, he made his point clearly. Number eighteen. Who's going to the job fair? A. By bus, I guess. B. The advertising staff. C. To get the work done. Number nineteen. Why was Sue quitting the company? A. She can leave it on her kitchen counter. B. She got hired by J. H. Penny. C. No, we first got to know each other at the university. Number twenty. Mr. Clinton made a good speech today, didn't he? A. Yes, he did a good job. B. This is the wrong address. C. No, I'm not in a good mood right now. Number twenty-one. Don't you think it's a little hot in here? A. No, I didn't quite catch what the speaker said. B. He went to the dentist's. C. Yes, it is a little stifling in here. Number twenty-two. Where do you think I can find these things on my directory? A. She's standing by the filing cabinet. B. Why don't you try the office supply store? C. Yes, you definitely can. Number twenty-three. Are you going to come here tomorrow afternoon? A. Yes, I'll be here at four p.m. B. Right, that's where it's supposed to be. C. Possibly by next Friday. Number twenty-four. Mr. Kawasaki expected the shipment delivered today, didn't he? A. I love it too. B. Yes, he's waiting for it right now. C. No, she's gone to the market now.
Number 25. Would you like to sign up for the investment committee? A. Perhaps could you give me further information about it? B. She signed up for judo class. C. Once when I was a full time student. Number 26. Isn't there some money that I have to pay for the shipment? A. The battery is charged. B. Yes, I like popcorn. C. No, shipping and handling charges are all included. Number 27. Do I have to sign these two pages or just one? A. Please sign both of them. B. The sign said to help yourself. C. Yes, it's a delicate design. Number 28. Did the builder set a completion date? A. I calculated it. B. The prices are fair enough. C. He mentioned late June. Number 29. Don't you think this classified ad could be more appealing? A. The advertising department. B. No, I like the plain look. C. Yes, we can add three new locations. Number 30. Would you like a brunch or dinner meeting? A. I'd like to have the steak, please. B. The restaurant. C. I'd go for dinner. Number 31. Could you give me a hand moving this closet over a little bit? A. To San Francisco next month. B. That's all we can give. C. Certainly, if it's not too heavy. Number 32. How about transferring closer to your family in Denver? A. Yes, that's exactly what I have in mind. B. Three sisters. C. I'll transfer it into your checking account. Number 33. Has anybody heard which director is coming next Saturday? A. I think it will be Mr. Johnson. B. I've never heard of that movie. C. No, at bed and breakfast. Number 34. What's your personal view on the wind power experiment? A. I expect it will be a hit. B. I was expecting that he would win. C. Yes, I got in touch with Dr. Sakimoto. Number 35. Why don't we meet at the conference room? Or shall we just stay here? A. He came to a seminar last week. B. Thanks, I've just finished my dinner. C. It might be cozier here. Number 36. I didn't know you'd worked out at a gym. A. I collect foreign coins. B. That's very thoughtful of you, thank you. C. They were giving me a real bargain. Number 37. Nancy recently joined here, didn't she? A. I came to the office early. B. I'll do it just in case. 
C. I'm not quite certain about that. Number 38. What do you think of your new house? A. I would love it. B. It's quite comfortable. C. Often by subway. Number 39. When could you go over the proposal? A. You're looking nice today. B. May I review it right now? C. It was such a nice plan. Number 40. There's something wrong with my laptop. A. I thought he looked handsome. B. That's a good inquiry. C. Perhaps I can help you. Part 3. Directions. You will hear some conversations between two people. You will be asked to answer three questions about what the speakers say in each conversation. Select the best response to each question and mark the letter A, B, C, or D on your answer sheet. The conversations will be spoken only one time and will not be printed in your test book. Now let us begin part three with question number 41. Questions number 41 through 43 refer to the following conversation. Hey Mike, could you tell me how to get to the central post office? Take the bus from over there at the opposite side of the bank, and the post office is two stops before the airport. It should not be that hard to find. Oh, that's not far from here. Thanks. And then, if by chance you have to go to the post office, I will take care of it for you. That's so kind of you, but no thanks. I've already stopped by yesterday. Number 41. Where does the woman want to go? Number 42. Where does the man tell the woman to take the bus? Number 43. What does the woman offer the man? Questions number 44 through 46 refer to the following conversation. Hello, my name is Eric, and I will be your server tonight. What can I get you? Yes, sure. I would like to have Pepsi to drink, and I want a New York strip steak, medium well, and I want extra corn and mashed potatoes on the side, please. Oh, currently we are out of corn. Would you like to have something else on the side instead? Then I would like tomato soup, please. Number 44. Who is the woman talking to? Number 45. What does she want for a main dish? Number 46. What does the waiter tell the woman about her side dishes? Questions number 47 through 49 refer to the following conversation. Here we are, the Chicago Art and Music Museum. Oh my God, I'd hate to disappoint you that it is closed on Sundays. Now, what can we do? Would you like to go shopping instead? Yeah, I'm really sorry. Let's go shopping. I really wanted to see the art pieces they have. I guess we are going to have to look for another time. Then maybe we can come next Saturday. Would you like to? Number 47. When does this conversation take place? Number 48. What does the man tell the woman about the museum? Number 49. Where do they go because the museum is closed? Number 50. 
Questions number 50 through 52 refer to the following conversation. Have you finished work on that new proposal on the construction project? Yes, it's going out to the client this afternoon. However, there is one problem with it it does not have the total budget calculated. Hmm. Then do you think maybe you and I could work on it after lunch? I really want us to get the proposal done by today. Sure, we could do that. I always appreciate your help, James. Number 50. What will be sent to the client? Number 51. What problem does the proposal have? Number 52. Why is the woman thankful to the man? Questions number 53 through 55 refer to the following conversation. Hello, this is Jessica, and I was just wondering if you still have the book Dark Days available. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, the book you're looking for was sold out a couple of days ago. Would you like us to order the book? Yeah, sure. Actually, could I get it mailed to my place as soon as you get it? I need it before next Thursday, and I'm way too busy until then to come get it. We will have the book before Thursday, but I am sorry we do not mail the books to our customers. Therefore, you will have to come to the store to get it. Number 53. What do you know from the conversation? Number 54. When will new copies of the book arrive in the store? Number 55. What will the woman probably do? Questions number 56 through 58 refer to the following conversation. Hey, Gina, have you heard that our new spring merchandise arrived yesterday? Yes, I have. Should we advertise it in the newspaper now that the spring merchandise has arrived? You know what? I have a better idea. Let's call all of our clients to tell them that all the latest styles for spring are in. You're right. Word of mouth has always worked well for us. Number 56. What are they discussing? Number 57. What does Gina suggest for the advertisement? Number 58. How have they done their advertising before? Questions number 59 through 61 refer to the following conversation. Hey, Hannah, take a look at my office. Something has changed, huh? Wow, I like the way you decorated your office. How long did it take you to decorate your office? Thanks. Um, It took about four hours and a half. It was a long and quite a hectic job. I still need to get some plants to put in the window, though. Why don't you take some of mine? They've grown so big that they won't fit in my window. Number 59. What does the man ask Hannah to see? Number 60. What does the man tell Hannah about decorating his office? Number 61. Why does Hannah offer to give her plans to the man? Questions number 62 through 64 refer to the following conversation. Sir, where is the exit on this train? I'm afraid you'll have to go to one of the first four cars to exit the train. You mean I can't get off from this car? But I have two bags that are as big as me. I can't drag them all the way to the front cars. This is absurd. I am sorry. Only the first four cars open onto the platform at this stop. Number 62. Where is the woman? Number 
Where can the woman exit from the train? Number 64. Why is the woman mad? Questions number 65 through 67 refer to the following conversation. Hello. Hey, what's up? It's been a long time since we've talked. Hey, do you want to go to the movies tonight? Tonight? But it's Tuesday and I have class tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning. Don't you have class tomorrow? No, I'm done with all my classes today. Well then, I'm going to go with someone else. Bye. Number 65. What is the phone call about? Number 66. Why can the woman not go to the movies? Number 67. What does the man tell her he will do? Questions number 68 through 70 refer to the following conversation. Can I see that magazine when you're finished with it? There's an article I want to read. Sure, which article is it? Is it the one about the new car from BMW? No, about the one on the upcoming election. Oh, this is a magazine called The Rides. It only has articles about cars. I have times in my car if you want it. Number 68. What does the woman want to do? Number 69. What did the woman assume about the magazine the man was reading? Number 70. What does the man offer the woman? Part 4. Directions. You will hear some short talks given by a single speaker. You will be asked to answer three questions about what the speaker says in each short talk. Select the best response to each question and mark the letter A, B, C, or D on your answer sheet. The talks will be spoken only one time and will not be printed in your test book. Now let us begin part four with question number 71. Questions 71 through 73 refer to the following introduction. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our television program. In this edition of HeartSmart, we are interviewing Dr. Marvin Monroe of the Heart Foundation. Dr. Monroe is a leading expert in heart fitness and is the author of three books on the subject. Today, he will be talking about the importance of a healthy diet in preventing heart disease. His talk will focus specifically on the dangers of trans fatty acids, which appear in high amounts in products such as margarine and synthetic whipped cream. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Monroe. Number 71. What kind of program is this? Number 72. How many books has Dr. Monroe written? Number 73. On what subject is Dr. Monroe an expert? Question 74 through 76 refer to the following announcement. Welcome to the Hideaway Resort. We believe that you will find this to be a comfortable place to enjoy the conference on sales strategies. Please make note of our expanded dining room, cigar lounge, and marble fountains. You are welcome to use any of the individual meeting rooms situated on the wide hall level. You will also find a continuous video demonstration in the ballroom featuring the top 10 salesmen for the year. Our program today will begin with a brunch in the dining room. Number 74. What is the topic of the conference? Number 
Where are the individual meeting rooms? Number 76. What is the first activity for the participants? Questions 77 through 79 refer to the following instruction. Okay, campers, let's go over the safety precautions we'll take today before we go on our trip down the river. Always wear your life preserver whenever you are in your canoe. Don't stand up in your canoe because it can capsize quite easily. If you do tip over, do not leave your boat. Don't let it float away and don't swim to shore. Now, as soon as you have put on your life jackets and gotten into your canoes, I'll show you the different ways to maneuver your boat and, of course, how to hold your paddles. Number 77. What is the instructor's main topic? Number 78. What will the instructor do when the campers are in their canoes? Number 79. What suggestion does the instructor make? Questions 80 through 82 refer to the following announcement. Welcome to the grand opening of our Corporate Sports Center. This facility is one of the most modern of its kind in the city. We have various exercise equipment, a 25-meter swimming pool, and a basketball court. The indoor tennis courts are still under construction, but they will be available for use by early next year. We hope you'll try coming here at lunchtime, but remember that only full-time employees can use the center on weekdays. We'll be open to all employees and their families on weekends, so that everybody can enjoy this new center. Number 80. What is not available until next year? Number 81. Who can use the facility on weekends? Number 82. Where is the announcement being made? Questions 83 through 85 refer to the following announcement. I was unable to find your chart, Mr. Freeman. You must be a new patient here at the Make Your Smile Brilliant Clinic. Before Dr. Levy will see you, I would like you to complete a few forms. Please be sure to include your insurance policy number, a complete list of your family medical history, and any medication that you're currently taking. When you have completed the forms, the assistant will begin your cleaning. I'll be here at the desk if you have any questions or concerns. Number 83. Where is the speaker? Number 84. What information should be included on the form? Number 85. What happens after the form has been filled out? Questions 86 through 88 refer to the following introduction. Good afternoon, listeners. Thanks for tuning in. I'm John Bell, and joining me today in the studio is financial advisor and author Brian McKnight. In his new book, Achieving Financial Independence, Mr. McKnight discusses a variety of new techniques on how to better manage your money. These new ideas will help you save and conserve without giving up the conveniences and lifestyle that you're used to. Tell us, Mr. McKnight, how did you become interested in the field of money management? Number 86. Where is the speaker? Number 87. What is the topic of Mr. McKnight's book?
Number 88. What does the speaker ask Mr. McKnight about? Questions 89 through 91 refer to the following announcement. Attention all students over the age of 18. After the disastrous earthquake in Santiago last week, Red Cross International is pleading for your help. The Canadian Red Cross has announced that it will be collecting blood donations on Friday this week. Blood types A positive and AB are those most needed, as is blood type O. Representatives from the organization will have a clinic arranged in the Swiss Family Gymnasium from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Donators will receive a Red Cross certificate and will also be provided with snacks and refreshments during the one-and-a-half-hour procedure. Number 89. When will the Red Cross hold its blood drive? Number 90. Where will donations be held? Number 91. How much time should students expect to spend at the collection centres? Questions 92 through 94 refer to the following announcement. Thank you for your patience here at the Billard Insurance Company's monthly board meeting. Over 20 members have already arrived, but we are waiting on just a few more. Today, we will hear from the directors of both the Human Resource Team and the Finance Department. Each presentation will be approximately 20 minutes and will outline the current status of each department as well as talk about future objectives. Our schedule will not allow for questions, so please feel free to email Mr. Jones and Mr. Barley any comments or inquiries that you may have. Number 92. What will the subject of the presentation be? Number 93. How long will the presentation last? Number 94. How were the listeners asked to contact the directors? Questions 95 through 97 refer to the following report. Officer Bradley was present today at Martin Luther King Secondary School for a presentation on personal safety. The students gathered in the gymnasium to listen to Officer Bradley's speech, which lasted for an hour and included a slideshow. Officer Bradley spoke about traffic safety and how to protect yourself in an emergency situation. Afterwards, the students were able to ask questions of the police officer. When the question period was over, Officer Bradley met with the student council to discuss safety program ideas to implement into the school program. Number 95. What did the officer do at Martin Luther King Secondary School? Number 96. How long did the speech last? Number 97. What did Bradley discuss with the student council? Questions 98 through 100 refer to the following short talk. Ladies, gentlemen and honoured guests, I am thrilled to be standing before you today to discuss the opening of the new Science Centre for our city. This project has been several years in the making and for some time many of us wondered if it would ever happen. However, over the last six months, several local businesses have come forward with grants to make this Science Centre possible. Our first exhibits will focus on static electricity and the importance of gravity. We have hired 50 of the country's leading scientists to provide insight and their expertise to this project. Please join me in thanking these 50 scientists who stand before you today. 
Number 98. What is the purpose of the talk? Number 99. What happened in the past six months? Number 100. What is the expert's profession?